It has been quite some time since I reviewed any hardware on the channel. Uh, and today uh, I'm going to review one item. I can't get my hands on anything at all. I'm sure you're having the same problems as well. Now, uh, a little bit about hardware for flight simming. Remember, all you need is a twisty grip joystick. You don't need any fancy gear. But some of you use this as a hobby, okay? This becomes a hobby. Flight sim does become a hobby. It's not a game, it's a hobby, all right? Now, uh, the last thing I reviewed uh, was this, way back, I think two, two years, two, three years ago, okay? This is Virtual Fly's TQ6 Throttle Quadrant. It is absolutely brilliant. It's fantastic. Uh, this is used in real world flight simulators in, in commercial training schools, okay? Uh, and the reason it's, it's used in those schools is because it's kind of certified with their sims and all that kind of stuff, but it's all made of metal. That detents and it's fine. It's brilliant, it's not just fine, it's actually brilliant. But it's, it's, it does the job for, what, guess what? A normally aspirated twin, you know? I jibber jabbered on a bit here. My point being is at the time, there was no mid-level controllers. They were either very, very, very expensive like the TQ6 here, or very, very cheap and flimsy. However, my point is, the honeycomb fixes all of that for all of us. And I'm still using this and I'm still gonna keep this. But for you guys, sitting at home, having a bit of fun, you, uh, you want something that does a bit of everything. And so do I, quite frankly. So this is why today we're going to review the Honeycomb Bravo Throttle Quadrant. Yes, it has autopilot, enunciation panels and all sorts of other stuff on it. It's quite heavy. I haven't opened the box yet, but it's quite heavy and it does all, it does all the different configurations. 737s, Airbuses, the lot, all in one throttle quadrant, which is the reason why I'm excited about this. So we're gonna unbox it, you're gonna see what's inside. I'm gonna set it up on my sim. I'm gonna tell you how to set it up, what's good about it, what's bad about it, from the point of view of a real world pilot. Let's have a look. Here we go, folks. Okay, so uh, let's open the box here. Uh, this is something here which we look at later on. I don't know what's in there yet, and here's some more bits and pieces. I think these are the tops of the throttle, so you can interchange them through different types of aircraft. It's very light, but very big. Uh, it's quite big. So yes, uh, these seem to be the throttles. Okay, that's that bit. Things uh, and stuff to clamp it with. Do you see the top those of those? Do you see the things here? See those? Yeah, these are for the tents and different uh, tops you put on it. So that's very clever. It's not just a bit of plastic. Oh, there is our standard set of uh, throttles for a normally aspirated piston twin. Very nice. I like the use of magnets. Magnets are good. Uh, nice one. And oh, look. For the 737. Z. And the Airbus is Z. Very nice. Uh, oh, they're, they're a little bit small. I'm a little bit disappointed with the size. They're bigger than that in real life, come on. We also have a couple of manuals here. Fair enough. And um, we have, this is some sort of a plate uh, to fix it onto a surface. I think it's worked by magnets or something like that. And we also have some clamps. So far, uh, yeah, it's quite light, but look, it's mid-range. Very small. Uh, that's my first impression of these controls. Let's have a look at setting it up. The setup was remarkably easy. That plate thing we saw earlier on, you can physically stick that to your desk, but I didn't bother, I just used the clamps. Now this is meant for a desk setup, but as you can see my setup, I'm limited for space. So it wasn't much of a problem with the space at all. I like the tension of the levers uh, and everything's really easily accessible. So I was quite pleased. So what I did, first of all, I uh, set up with an Airbus or a two engine jet configuration. It comes default uh, as a piston engine twin configuration. We'll talk about that later. But the physical setup of it was just incredibly easy and they have very, very cleverly uh, adapted so you can actually stick it to your desk or you can use Velcro if you want to. So it's just not an issue. Very, very easy. And you see, I was playing with the tension there. That's really, really very good. Also, if you want any advice in cable management, uh, do comment me below and I can consult you on your cable management. I know you're impressed. 
The next thing I did was I installed the honeycomb drivers. Now, the only reason you need to install the drivers is to get the lights working on the Bravo Control quadrant, okay? Uh, it's very, very simple, very, very straightforward. As you can see, I'm doing it here. You just download, uh, you actually have the downloads for all of the different flight simulators, uh, depending on what you're using. Uh, they have, for example, for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. They also have it for X-Plane 11, for the PC and the Mac, and they have it for P3D. Uh, of course, I'm installing it for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Make sure you don't install the FSX one, but like I almost did there. You just run the XE uh, and that's it. Simple as pie. Here we are in the cockpit of the Beach Baron. Now, by default, uh, over to my right hand here is the throttle uh, quadrant, okay? Now, uh, by default, it's set up for a normally aspirated twin, uh, which is fine. Now, I did say that the levers were a bit small. For this, it's okay. Actually, I'm just being fussy. I'm just being picky, you know what I'm like. So, uh, it's actually quite quite good, and I like the tension. But look, let's just go from one bit to the next. So, so first of all, you've got your gear switch here. Uh, and that, uh, when it's when the gear is down, it's green. When they're in transition, it's red. And when they're up, it's off, okay? Uh, so, it works quite well. The next bit here is the autopilot system cross here, okay? And uh, let's just have a quick look at that. Let's just zoom in here to the German here. So, if I switch on the autopilot here, the autopilot is now active. And if I switch heading mode, the lights light up, which is really, really nice. Uh, which is fantastic. Uh, likewise, vertical speed, or if I want the altitude, you know, and this little knob here uh, is changing my heading. You see the heading bug there? That's the heading bug. Okay, so uh, now, it, traditionally, it's been quite annoying because no matter how fast you move the knob, it, it stays at the same speed. As you can see, it accelerates here. If I want to go to 060, I can do it quite quickly. So that's great news. You know, and it really is well done. And there's a little detents here. You can feel it switching like one to each degree. I, each knob or each detent I feel here at the button, it goes one degree, which allows your accuracy to be very high performance. If you have a side tech, uh, any side tech stuff at all, it just integrates beautifully. You don't need to worry about anything. For example, I have side tech over here. You can't see it in the camera and I switch it off the autopilot. Have a look at the switch here. I'm not going to touch it. You know, they integrate perfectly, so it's no big deal. And that's the great news about this. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, all the autopilot functions are fantastic. Uh, these buttons down here, you can configure for anything. They are set for certain defaults, but you can change them very easily. Uh, also, the control column, by the way, is moving there because I've got the autopilot on. Let's switch it off. There we go. And we got a control column back. Um, also, uh, these switches, yeah, as I said, fine. But look here, if I can just move the camera a little bit here. You see these lights here? They light up. So that's the parking brake on. So you've got all sorts of warning lights here, which is very, very useful. Flaps, for example. Nice, chunky feel to it. Flaps up. Flaps approach. Flaps down. So it works very, very well. Uh, now, now on to the uh, gear lever here. Nice, big, chunky gear lever. Let me just get this camera here. It's got it awkward. Big, chunky gear, folks. Nice big chunky gear lever. The trim is absolutely fantastic. This works really, really well if you like your hand trim. You don't need your side tech if you have one anymore. But they're both integrated, as you know, as I previously said. Now, down to the levers. I did say that the levers were a little bit small for the jets. We're going to have a look at that soon. But the, the tension's very good, okay? Now, you can loosen up the tension uh, as much as you like. And it's really well done, I have to say. They, they do feel very good in your hands. They really are very good, so I have no complaints there at all. Uh, now, uh, it does have a go around button to the side. I don't think I can get a view for that now, but there's a little red button for the go around. Um, let me just stretch this out here for you folks. Uh, oh. It's actually on, on this side, you can't see it, okay? Uh, but it's there. Uh, there's a tension lever there. So it's just fantastic. It's nice and robust, it's tough. Let's see how quick it takes to change the levers. Okay, so let's change to uh, a four-engined jet, like the 747, for example. All you do... Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> uh, come on, camera. I'm not very good at cameras, uh, as you can tell. So just to interchange the levers, just pull them out. It shouldn't be too difficult. See, it's not being difficult. If you find it's difficult to put them in, you're putting them in the wrong way. So there we've got the props gone. Oh, by the way, this is very useful. These little things. If you're not using one of these, okay, look here. If you're not using, let's say, this one, 
got this lovely little plastic thing that covers it up nice and tidily. See that? Don't throw those out. These are brilliant little things. So let's say if I'm not using uh, anything on this, you just cover it up. It stops any dust or dirt or grit or peanut butter getting in or God knows. So these are very handy. Keep, keep these. They're very good. Uh, good. Okay, so uh, let's change. Let's put the flap lever on. Shouldn't be hard to put on. Speed brake goes here. And as you can see, uh, the metal, these are, see this intelligence built in here, which is fantastic. So I'm looking for engine number one. Number one, number one, number one is here. So if it's anyway hard, you're not doing it right. Come on. There we go, that's number one. And that's number four. So you gotta put them on, on, on in order. That's number four. So as you can see, it's not taking too long. There we go. Levers are in place. Flaps are up. Speed brake up. Now, of course, these are, are activating the actual aircraft. Let's see if I go into the 747. Escape out of here. It takes no time at all to change the levers, really, at all. Uh, it's quite, quite simple and easy. So I'm on the 747. I set up my controls. But look, here's the speed brake here. A little bit of a delay, but that's no big deal. Just a little bit, okay, just a tad bit, but it works very, very well. Uh, but there is a little bit of delay with that, maybe it's a 747, but look at this, I just found it. Look, that's instant, instantly reactive. Look at that. That is instantly reactive with all the different throttles. That is really quite cool. Now, I did say they were a little bit small earlier on. I'm just being picky, you know what I'm like. Uh, it's fine because you're going to use your two fingers, aren't you, you know? Uh, but you can grasp your whole hand over this as an adult uh, and you can you, you can set the throttles also the reverse uh, if I pull this this one here back and all the way down a little bit of a delay but that's okay there's a delay anyway uh, but that's fine that doesn't bother me at all there's a little red button here you can't see it on screen at the minute that's I presume I think that's for toga okay flap lever really impresses me look at this uh, let me just just my hand here so you can see if I go to setting one the lever goes to one. Do you see that? I go to uh, five. It goes to five. It's actually calibrated perfectly for you. That's amazing. Uh, I can't. I love a little line here, but I can draw a little black line, and it's exactly as I see it on the control. Can you see that there? Not, not quite. There now you can see it. So it's on the ten. If I go to fifteen, it goes to the fifteen of the sim as well. So that's really. I didn't expect that at all. And then back up to one. For example, there we go, uh, and then up. So that's instant, instant controls. Oops, instant controls. So it is really very, very good. Look at that. Look at that, folks. That is quite cool. So am I pleased? Is it worth it? Of course, it's worth it. It is absolutely worth it. You've got everything here. You've got single engine piston. You've got twin engine piston. You've got turbo props. You've got two engine. Uh, jets for Airbus and 737s and 747s and everything. So yeah, I think it's pretty darn good and I'm glad I bought it. Do keep an eye on the description below because I will have links of where you can purchase the Bravo throttle because it's touch and go with all the shortages at the moment with regards to electronic items. So do keep an eye on the description. I will update them and I will change them uh, for your area of the world where you want to buy it. Uh, and until then, I will see you on the stream very soon.